Yes, yes, oh yes, greetings. Greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus Christ, is Lord, and He's above it all. And in Him, we live and we move and we have our being. It is Him, Jesus Christ, that is above it all. And it is Him that we worship, it's Him that we serve, it's Him that we love, it's Him that we put our trust in because we know that He is the one that is going to carry us through. He is the one that's going to take us through. Not of our own ability, not of our own accord, not of, our, of the will of man. It is not by might, it is not by power, it is by my Spirit, says the Lord. You know, I think we've been around the worlders for so long. We've been around those that do things through sheer um, human endeavor, human strength, human might, you know, and then empowered by demonic forces. And we've been around that for so long that we don't, that we've started to sometimes forget the reality that one plus God is the majority. If you've got Jesus Christ and you're walking with him, you've got all you need to upset kingdoms in this world, to, to tear down, to bind, to loose, to do whatever God wants you to do. You've been given all authority on heaven and earth was given unto Jesus Christ. In him you live and move and have your being. So, therefore, you have the authority. If you walk with him, you've got the real deal. You've got, you are the real deal. There is nothing that is more real than you in Christ Jesus. Walking it out. Living this life. Living this thing. Now, since you've got the goods, since you have the power to upend, if God would have you do it, to upend the entire world system as it were, well, if God is moving you to do it, then do it. If God is moving you to end human trafficking, to be part of that, to pray, then do it. If God's moving you to create, then you create. If good, For this reason, Jesus Christ was manifest, to destroy the works of the devil. And the manifestation of Christ Jesus to this very moment, to this very moment, destroys the works of the devil. We see that continually. We see that historically. We see that in time. And we know that if it is the case that things carry on, we will see that we will see the manifestation of that in what we go into. But now the reality is this is the moment that you have. Right now, this moment, I am. You know, we we can get distracted by the world and get wrapped up into something in the future, something in the past, go all over the place, but God wants you to be here now. God wants you to be focused now, to look to Him now, to be in step with Him now, to trust Him now. It doesn't matter whatever has come before this moment. This moment is what you have. So in this moment, in this moment right now, do that thing which God has for you to do. Do that thing which God has for you to do. In this moment that you have right now, do that thing which God wants you to do. Now, it, what is it that God would have us to do? Well, as a body, God is having us move. As a body, God is having us engage. As a body, God is having us um, listen to His voice Pray, speak the words of Christ, move in the things of the Spirit, trust Him. And you know what? Listen, you got to be real with God. You cannot do this as a religious experiment. This is not a religious experiment. You cannot play footsie with the world. You cannot, you, you cannot flirt with, uh, you know, the, you, you can't. You've just got to be real. Now, God will give you wisdom so that you can navigate through all of this. But your allegiance has to be steadfast to one. Either you'll love one and you'll serve the other. No. What did God say? Jesus said, 
with with regards to loving God or loving mammon. You know, you're going to either love one and hate the other. You're going to serve one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. You know, you cannot. It doesn't work. It is oil and water. The two do not mix. So, you know, when you when you serve the Lord and you serve him in truth, it's going to put it, it's going to put everything else into a different perspective. It's going to change the way you see everything else. The things of the world grow strangely dim. The offers of the world grow strangely dim. The enticements of the world grow strangely dim. The goals of the world, the pursuits of the world, grow strangely dim. The aspirations of the world and the world system grow strangely dim. The heights that you can achieve in the world grow strangely dim. Paul, when he was talking about it, he said um, that he counted all these things but dung. When he went through everything that he was in the world prior to Christ, he said, I counted all but dung. You know, for, the, for what? In, in comparison to what I have in Christ. In comparison to what I have in Christ, all the rest of that stuff is worthless, is meaningless, doesn't mean a thing. I could do without it. Don't need it. Don't want it. Doesn't matter. Sure, maybe it's there, but if it's there, it's just, it, it's just a thing. And I'm not going to worry or stress or be perplexed about it. I'm just going to carry on with what God has in front of me to do and let things be what they are. You know, there's a lot of things in the world that are traps and entrapments. If you need something in this world, if you want anything in this world, it's going to be something that uh, is going to be a hook in you. You know, the world will always look for that. What do you want in the world so badly that you're willing to let go of that which is true, that which is real? Is there anything that you want so much the enemy comes and searches you out. Jesus said of the enemy in that regard, he said that the prince of, when he was in Gethsemane, the prince of the power of the air, he's coming, but he's got nothing in me. He has nothing in me. That's an interesting statement. I've thought about that one before. You know, he's got nothing in me. You know, does the world have something in somebody? Well, whatever place that you've not turned over your being to Christ, is the place that the world's got something in you. Because it does. It, it wants that. It wants that hook in your soul. Do you need notoriety? Do you need success? Do you need to be somebody? <laughs> Do you need the, the approval of man? The validation of man? Do you need the... the at the end of the day, you know, do you, you know who you are in Christ. See, when you align yourself with the truth, there's something beautiful that happens. And what, what happens is now, you're, you're aligned with what's real. The truth is what's real. And when you've aligned yourself with truth, you, you, the rest of it can be what it is. Truth will remain constant. Truth will remain consistent. You know, you, and if you search for the truth, if you seek the truth, buy the truth and sell it not. You know, you, you've got to know the value of what you have. you got to go hard after it. Once you have it, hey, you're, you're golden. Because now you have what's real. You have what's of value. You know, when people go the way of the lie, it's a, it's a slippery slope. Because the way of the lie, you, you never get off of that. You've got to always remember what you said last. You've got to always manipulate. See, liars are manipulators. R liars are manipulators. They've always got to remember what they said last. They've got to continue to spin it. And it just leads to a host of other problems and other issues when you go that way. But when you live in the truth, you live free. Because when the truth will, you'll know the truth 
and the truth will make you free, right? Okay, so when you live in truth, you're free. If you're a liar, you're a slave. If you are a liar, you are a slave. You are a slave to that lie. And that lie will never let you free. And in the day and the age that we live in now, that lie can come back to haunt you. Because the day and the age that we live in now, things are coming back to people from all over the place. You know, I do believe though that in the future, there's going to be objectively verifiable ways to distinguish between that which is a lie and that which is truth when it comes to things coming up from people's past. You know, when it, I, I've, because definitely the worlders, they try to, they, oh gosh, they are evil in this regard. In creating things, and fabricating things that don't exist in order to expedite a political, human, carnal, evil, satanic agenda. So, you know, that's just going to be part of the reality of what, but it's, I thank God that all that's being exposed, because as it's exposed and the tactics and the methods of the devil are being exposed, we have ways now that we will bring in to mitigate those, to deal with those. That will be brought in as well. And that will come from so many different places, because it'll have to be in order to have, um, in order for, for the world to continue to move forward. See, if the worlders get their way, what you're going to see is just complete and total destruction. You're just going to see everything go off the cliff. But God has his own plan. And we've seen that. We've seen where how God, what he does, is he just, he has his own agenda. And when he moves forward with his own agenda, everything shifts. Everything changes. When God moves forward with his own agenda, all the things that were there and intended before, all of a sudden they just fall apart. You know, we, and, and his kingdom comes forward, his plan. You know, so often people, they have their own ideas and intentions, and they try to do them. And all these plans that people make, but then God speaks. God, God moves, God shifts something. And when he does that, all of everything that people spent their whole life doing and whole life building, it comes to nothing in a second. Case in point, Nebuchadnezzar, you know, up there on the top of his roof, bragging to himself, look at all the stuff that I did, all the stuff that I built. Before the, it says before the words even had finished leaving his lips, you know, God said, all right. Here you go. I'm just going to take your mind away. I'm going to turn you into something like a cow. Because your mind is on loan from God. Your breath is on loan from God. To the wicked of this world, they breathe God's air. To the wicked of this world, you breathe the air that God allowed to be put in your lungs. And in a moment, he can call for it back. In a moment, he can take it all away. So he's allowing for a lot of things to be bore out. He's allowing for a lot of things to, to happen and to take place. And but in that process, he's glorified. You know, you know, we've been talking about the trafficking thing. Um, 20 on 20, that's been something that has continued to move forward. You see the world shifting. God's changing things globally as His people all over the world continue to rally together and to pray in accordance with His will, plan, and purpose to displace powers, principalities, works of the devil. Now, listen guys, you've got to bind got to use that power that God has put in you to bind the strong man. Because before we plunder the strong man's house, we have to bind them. We've been given the power and the spirit to bind. So, you know, this is this is spiritual warfare. And as you go into spiritual warfare, you use the power that God's given you to 
displace, to bind, to expose, to root out, to cast out, to remove. And, and God will give you that quickening in your spirit. You need to do that. Because, um, as you know, the enemy does not want you to bind him. You know, he wants to, he wants to just be running amok, running free. Because when you bind him, he's bound in Jesus' name. Because you've got the greater power. So they don't want you to bind them. They don't want you to expose them. You know, when the enemy is drug into the light, when something is drug into the light, half its power is gone just then and there. When something is exposed, right away, half the power is gone. Just like that. So there's incredible power in drawing things into the light. Even if, even if that's all that happens, half the power is gone right there. Just because once things are seen and known and exposed and revealed for what they are, you know, there's a lot of other things that kick in. You know, morality kicks in, conscience kicks in. Um, you know, people can't turn a blind eye anymore. Now, are they enablers of something? All this other stuff starts happening when things are exposed and brought into the light. When they're not exposed, when they're hidden in the dark, which is the way the enemy likes it, you know, then darkness and evil thrive when they can cloak themselves in that, when they can hide in that. And that's a big, big part of what God is doing right now in the unveiling, in the apocalypse, in the wave of light that he's bringing in, is everything is being exposed. Everything. Everything is being exposed, brought to the light, brought to the surface, where people have to deal. You know, they've got to deal with who they are. They've got to deal with other people of who they are. Things need to now be known, exposed, revealed, and dealt with. You know, what do you do when everything that you thought all of a sudden isn't what you thought it was? How do you now relate? You know, a lot of people cannot deal with the fact that things that they held as sacred cows all of a sudden are something else. But when you're on the side of truth, you know what? That's okay. Because you're you're for truth. And so if something is if if you get additional information, if you get additional understanding, and you find out that that is what's actual real and that's what's true, it's fine. You can adjust. Because you are not stuck holding on to um a, a a dogma. You're not stuck holding on to something that is just because that's what you've always done. Now, when you're on the side of truth, if something is revealed and exposed, then you go with what's true. So, <clears throat> seek the truth. Ask God for it. Ask God for wisdom, knowledge, understanding. And I would say also the power to act on what he shows you and what you know. Because I tell you, that's something that's frustrating too. When you, when you know, when you understand, and then when you can't do much about what you know and understand. That's a, that's a tough thing. You know, I mean, yes, we can pray. You know, and that's, that is the most powerful thing you can do. But I also believe that God wants us to do acts of service. He wants us to engage. He wants us to do things. And I pray that God gives us the position, the platform, so that we can do, and so that we can engage. So that we can make the contribution that God wants us to make on the earth. God wants there to be life and light and hope and the way to be known. Why is it that the worlders work so hard to try to keep the child of light away from that stage, off that screen? The true ones, marginalized, out in the desert. They don't want people to hear that voice. Why? Why? 
why in in the in the world of ideas in the in the competition for you know logic and reason and for people to reason with each other why would there be such an opposition well because it's the best it's the best thing out there Listen, if you knew right, put yourself in the seat of the worlders for a second put yourself in their in their mindset if you knew that the follower of Christ has the greatest power of all that the follower of Christ has the answer has the solution and if the follower of Christ moves in and recognizes and knows who they are and moves in that you're gonna lose every time well what would you do with the follower of Christ if you could you do exactly what they've been doing <laughs> which is keep them down lock them up put them out of the way marginalize them push them into the desert get them thrown off their job trump up some charges that don't exist whatever it is but keep that person away because if that person ever gets on the field ever engages ever moves forward in anything of any substance they're gonna they're gonna just run the tables they're gonna win every time and they don't want that they don't want that what they want is they want they they would rather the follower of Christ doesn't is not in the game because if you're if they, they would they would rather they would rather just you not be there now here's the thing is God's finding his ways to make sure that his people are there he's finding his ways you know Joseph in Egypt was God's plan God's setup God's purpose Joseph had a dream the dream was that you know he saw his sheaf of wheat being bowed down to by the ones of all of his brothers saw the Sun the moon and 12 stars bowing down to him now you know he had not been a slave yet he'd not gone through anything yet what did all of that mean well God was in all of that including his entire experience all the struggles all the heartbreak all the heartache all the, the even the internal turmoil and questioning within because he's he was an honorable man he had the chance hey he had the chance to have some fun with Potiphar's wife didn't do it he had the chance along the way several different places to make things better for himself but he stuck to his principles he stuck to the word that was within him and it, that word that path kept in the natural taking him from what seemed to be bad to worse sold out by his own brothers thrown into slavery tries to do the right thing you know tries to keep some integrity just thrown from bad to worse to worse You know, the scriptures in different places doesn't say it in Exodus, but um, you know, it does. It does say it where um, that you know his feet were put in the stocks. I mean, just can you imagine that? You know, you're you're following God with your whole heart, and well, if you listen to this, you can't imagine that because this has probably been part of your experience. But you're following God with all your heart and in the process of following Him you just get pummeled for trying to do the right thing for trying to just follow Him and, and, and just be led by the Spirit but look at what God did with Joseph God found His way to set that man up found His way to bring him into that position into Pharaoh's court to make him the second highest ruler in the nation 
and to deliver his people from what would have been certain destruction. Now, if God had that way of doing that in that time, you got to know that God's got his way of doing that today. He came to set the captives free, and in Christ Jesus we're free indeed. Listen, brothers and sisters, we're in an amazing, amazing, amazing time. And, you know, you can't fret, you can't be worried, you can't be perplexed. You know, those are all tactics of, that the enemy is trying to use to just bombard your mind to get you to think a different way. No, you keep your eyes on Christ Jesus, you ride this wave, you focus on Him, you let Him lead and guide you, you trust Him because you know that He's going to lead and guide you, that He's going to take you from glory to glory, from strength to strength. He's the one. He is your Alpha. He's your Omega. He is the one that has you. And in the end, He's going to tell you, Well done, my good and faithful servant. We're in it. And we're in it to win it. Run the race, brothers and sisters. We love you. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. Say hi. We'd love to hear from you. God bless you. We'll talk to you again sometime really, really soon.